Hello, good afternoon. My name is Nathaniel Osgood. It's my great pleasure and honor to be here today to share with you our work in leveraging tools in the area of computational epidemiology and public health informatics to help provide public health policymakers with insights so that they can invest in health policies that are simultaneously more effective in reducing the burden of illness, more robust under future uncertainties, and secure greater bang for the buck. I should emphasize that the work I'm going to be emphasizing today, concentrating on, is, is joint uh, together with Professor Kevin Stanley at the University of Saskatchewan Department of Computer Science. And our work in this project, and more broadly, has only been made possible with the uh, tremendous uh, support and uh, cooperation with a wide variety of uh, partners from the health sciences area, Co cooperation for which we're very grateful. The work that I'm going to be focusing on today leverages the growing power, ubiquity, and functionality of today's smartphones. Many people are aware of the dizzying array of functionality offered by today's smartphones and have adopted them accordingly. But few of those people have realized that much of this functionality is made possible through the provision on the phone of a wide battery of sensors. In our lab, and together with Professor Stanley, we have created the IEPI healthcare monitoring system based upon these Google Android smartphones, the number one selling smartphone out there. This system leverages the growing willingness of many people out there to share their sort of health information for their own sake, for the sake of others, and for their own insights. This system takes the batteries of sensors that are available naturally on these phones to support common everyday functionality, such as rotating the screen when the position of the phone is changed, and leverages those for health insight. For example, by leveraging the Bluetooth capa communication capabilities of these phones, which allow devices to communicate, we can secure insight into people's contact patterns, the degree of proximity of two nearby people to one another. We can gain an understanding of people's location, portion size of foods that they're eating, their levels of physical activity that they're enjoying, and secure understanding of that location both indoors and outdoors, within a facility and outside. We can also get an understanding of various aspects of environmental context, get an understanding of people's communication behavior and their consumption of particular aspects of communication germane to their health, and understand cases where they're interrupted in their, in their behaviors. to help disambiguate and enrich the understanding of the data that's gathered in an automated fashion from our sensors, we can also issue surveys, surveys whose delivery is contingent upon context, and where the answers to those surveys can help provide additional degrees of insight or understand better the meaning of the sensor data we pick up. All of this information is indexed by time, which provides us a very rich set of understanding of how people's health behavior plays out over time and changes over the course of a day, over the course of weeks, or of months within the year. So, for example, such a system allows us to collect information on differences in the physical activity level among different subsets of our study populations. 
So individuals who opt into such a study, for example, are shown here on this screen. With participant one on the left hand side coming from quite a far distance within the city. And participant two on the right living in a different area of the city and one much closer to their ultimate destination at the university. What we can see is very different levels of physical activity associated with these participants. By examining the, the change in their location over time, we can gain insight, for example, as to the mode of, of transportation used for each of these people. More broadly, we can amalgamate the physical activity information gained from various participants and gain an understanding of how physical activity patterns vary more broadly across the city. This information could, for example, help hint as to insights related to the connection between aspects of urban form and physical activity patterns. For example, the degree to which amenities such as bike paths or sidewalks help support and stimulate physical activity. The degree to which the shapes of streets might impact physical activity. Using the same device, we can gain understanding from the information from the smartphones as to the social context of people's uh, people's behavior. This could be the social context of the physical activity we just saw in the previous slides, or simply a uh, degree of mixing between this individual and other individuals, either those enrolled in the city or others who happen to, to leave their devices in a mode that, that uh, in which indicates that they allow them to be discovered, so-called Bluetooth discoverability. Gaining an insight of social interactions can help us understand where those social interactions are occurring, or, or what times, in what physical activity context, for example, and how those change over the course of seasons. For example, how does crowding associated with, um, with living conditions change over the course of the year as it's more possible to get out in, in the summer, for example, than in the winter. This information can lend us understanding, for example, of patterns of infectious disease. Unfortunately, left to its own devices, the sort of information we can collect from the phones is a mass of numbers that communicates limited meaning, limited insight. To help provide us with, with real insights, to help turn this cacophony of data available from this phone into real insights, we turn to models. Computational models, such as simulation and inference models, help us make sense of this flood of sensor data. Particularly, they help us understand the implications of the sensor data for our decisions, for the decisions of health policymakers by linking them to health policy outcomes. Now these linkages are frequently rather distal. For example, a model can help us understand the degree to which physical activity patterns we see in different areas of the city might ripple through over the of course of years and decades into greater burden of chronic disease or the degree to which the contact patterns we see associated with physical activity, for example, might be leveraged by an intervention to help shape physical activity patterns in a positive direction, or the degree to which those contact patterns might put people at risk or certain locations at risk of infection transmission. So these models help us link this cacophony of data on the one hand to the impacts of our choices, thereby helping us to make more informed choices. For example, by joining the data from these smartphones on the one hand with models, 
models of infection transmission, we can identify potential infection transmission hotspots across the city. Using a hypothetical situation here, we could also, uh, for example, identify infection spread hotspots within facilities. This is hypothetical because we don't yet have data on this project, but it is something that we're pursuing with the Saskatoon Health Region within local long-term care facilities. Frequently, the data collected by these phones has many possible uses. It exhibits not just dual, but, but many, many uh, additional possible uses. One example is the sort of data on the, the movement patterns, of proximity, activity levels, and, and other aspects of social interaction uh, within a facility, either by patients or staff, doctors, nurses, for example. That sort of information can help us improve the efficiency of health services delivery and the quality of those services being delivered within a facility. In closing, I'd like to provide my most sincere thanks to my close collaborator, Dr. Kevin Stanley, with whom I've worked very, very closely and centrally to, to make this work possible, to our joint students and other trainees, to our collaborators in the health sciences area, to NSERC, for whom this presentation was created, particularly for its, its discovery grant program, which plays a particularly central and, and key role in my, uh, my research program, particularly because of its, its flexibility and versatility, and to the under other funders and broad supporters of our work. And finally, to my colleagues and staff here at the University of Saskatchewan, who provide the local context for this work and make it such a pleasure to perform. Thank you very much. I'm grateful for your attention.